I'm Gene Timperley, owner and operator of Spring Lake Angus, and this is my wife, Kelsey Timperley. Well, these are all this uh, last year's heifers. So these are uh, heifers that we're keeping for next year. They've been bred. Uh, we synchronized them and we bred uh, first time around everything that uh, we thought the pedigrees had worked uh, were AI to 77.5. The pedigrees is what we go by. We don't go by EPDs, mm -hmm. we go by pedigrees. And we like to keep it. You know, the last heifer we sold in Denver was went back to 707.99 times. Uh, we've always just stayed with very well proven bulls. There's some Shoshone Viking heifers in here. 775 heifers in here. Uh, it's just a lot of old Angus, Aberdeen Angus cattle is what we believe in. Uh, Rito 707, basically, uh, he'll, he'll really pop at a two and a half year old. And at a yearling, uh, the new bloodlines will beat him. But uh, he'll throw, he'll match him when it, it's all over with. He'll maybe be a bigger bull than anything that's out there. I'm working on the sales stuff for next year already. Uh, I usually start right after we get cows to pasture and I know what calves we have and what we think will be working for the sale. I gather blood or hair and get all the DNA done before uh, we even bring them in for preconditioning. Preconditioning is when we really decide which ones we're, we're going to go ahead and put on the sale. The 707 has probably moved up to next to EXT with the most progeny out there because as of today, he's still kicking out progeny while EXT has really fell off. But when you have resource and regard and renown out there, some of the top AI bulls, it shows that he can work today with the cattle as he did back in the 60s and 70s. He's still a good animal to cross your, your cattle with. You learn what pedigrees work. The Shoshone Viking pedigrees work very well with the with the Rito. Uh, a lot, there's a lot of different pedigrees that have worked well with the Rito pedigrees. If you can cut five pounds on 200 head of cows and you can fly for here we're in a 200 day winter. And if we can cut five pounds out of each one of those cows and they stay, still stay healthy and flesh and still reproduce, that's a lot of dollars. We raise 77.5. And 77.5 is known throughout the Angus business because of resource and renown, which I think resource was one of the number one selling semen bulls for like a year or two. And you're always looking for that other one that, that everybody in the Angus business will get to know. It's uh, that's what keeps you in the registered Angus cattle business is you're always looking for that next great one. So we try to stay pretty tight with our pedigree and then we go out and we try to find cattle that will make them better. And it's, I mean, that's just something you do your entire life. You're always shooting for that. We do a full year guarantee, a full season. Uh, so we do basically about a, a five month period is what we will do with people. Our bulls are guaranteed for that first season. 62 years we've been selling registered Angus cattle. So we went into three generations of selling bulls to them. There's actually places where you go to deliver cattle and they look like your cattle because they're so bred by your bulls and by they buy your females. Customers that just call us and say, uh, bring me a bull, don't care, you got them, they're good, just bring them. The things that we really get a lot of compliments on is our... Uh, docility. Yeah, docility. Yeah, I know that we had talked about that before, but uh, that is, but that is the old bloodlines. The old bloodlines are just that way. Most of the people that we sell bulls to, their calves go to market to be eight. We're not the number guy, we're not the show guy. These guys are buying them and they want to top the market. When we had 600 cows, we topped Superior's market when we sold. Probably, I wouldn't say all 50, but probably 
35 to 40 of the states we've sold in. When I look for a cow, well, you, you got to have three things. You got to have a good udder, you got to have good feet, and you got to have flesh ability. Those are the first three things because you can keep her for less money if she's flushable. She's got good feet, you don't have to do anything with that. And if she's got a good udder, you don't have to do anything with that. So you get those three things and then you have to look at pedigree to match it up to make it better.